call to order at 607 on the 21st and can we review and approve the minutes from November 16th 2017 everybody get a chance Sorry. to take a look at them can I get any feedback or a motion to approve motion to approve all in favor Aye. Aye. Okay. There we go. Uh, financial statement. I said. Okay. Uh, so you have eight <coughs> warrants to sign tonight, in the amount of fifty-one thousand one thirty-six ninety-seven, and I sent you your reports out yesterday. Um, there's a uh, there's some um, variances between where some of the IAs are being charged so it looks like we're a little bit over in our um school choice fund which is on which is on page five uh, about ten thousand eight thirty five but we do have some savings um on the regular 01 budget and and this happens because when we budget in december people are in a certain position and then the principal has the right to change assignments so then people get moved around to different accounts and as long as all the numbers add up to being pretty much zero i'm okay with it and this this is the time of year I flush that out when I'm starting to put the budget together for next year. So there's really, I have no concerns. Um, we're right on track for spending our budget. Um, so um, unless you have some questions about that, um, I would like to ask that we take the budget calendar uh, out of order because um, Dr. Carey has asked me to, um, has allowed me to leave after uh, giving my report. Mm -hmm. um, so in the uh, packet, you, we have the FY19 budget calendar. So during the week of December 4th, all the district administrators met with Dr. Carey and myself, and we talked about the plan for the budget. And then during the week of the 11th, uh, we had individual meetings with each building principal. And at those meetings were not just myself and the superintendent, but our SPED director, our technology director, our facilities director. Um, and they were very productive meetings. And now we just have all the raw data, which I will be compiling, hopefully finishing next week. Um, and then January 18th is our next meeting. And we'll be bring, bringing our first glance of the budget um, to you and then February 15th would be our next meeting where we uh, if you have changes you want me to make um, February or March we usually get called to present to the town although um, the new finance chair and I'm sorry that I'm forgetting the gentleman's name met with Dr. Carey and myself and he really um, wants to be at our meetings um, I we had expressed how important it is when we go to present the budget to the town, it's usually Dr. Carey and myself and the principal. They're not hearing what you guys have mm -hmm. said during the deliberation. So if they came to our meetings, they could hear what the school committee was deliberating about the budget. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see him in attendance. Uh, and then March 15th will be our public hearing. And at that meeting, after the public hearing closes, you will vote your budget. Um, we believe the town meeting this year is May 14th and your election, town elections are on May 17th. So I have good. the town meeting in here, is that right? I thought the town meeting was May 7th. Yeah, uh, is it the first Tuesday of the month or the second? First Monday. First Monday. First I, I have it as May 7th on my thing, <laughs> I just check on that. Okay. Uh, do you have a calendar, Elaine? I do, but I, I thought I put it in here and I don't see it in here. Because that may need, I had asked um, uh, Donna Hathaway to look up the dates and check the uh, websites. Um, the first Monday would be the 7th, would be Monday, May 7th, so we may need to change that. Okay. okay. Can I, um, there is one other thing that I'd like to see on these budget timelines, and that's the date that the individual towns warrant submissions close okay and that's different from each town but that's an important piece of information um yeah we talked about that yeah. at frontier sunderland's date has passed waitley's is i think it's the first week in january deerfield they didn't the gentleman there didn't know tuesday night and i'm not sure about conway hmm. 
So are you asking, so there's two different things. Are you asking like when the capital requests are due or when the <clears throat> when the final date to get something on the town warrant? Yeah, I mean, that's all two different dates. Right. Um, I guess those are both useful. That's Those are both. Okay. Th those are both useful tidbits for us to know. And since you're calling here anyway, just one more question. So we, um, I saw an email this afternoon from um, the town administrator, Tom Hutchinson, and he already knew that we would want the $50,000 request into the stabilization yeah. fund. And also there's it's some issues well. going on with the well and yeah. that was going to be put on the capital expense as well. Okay. And I've got the information on that. Okay. So, great. I briefly bumped into him just this evening and I said, well, and he looked at me, he said, deep subject. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great comeback. <laughs> <laughs> and then the only other communication I did have with the town administrator is there is still a warrant article open with about $2,600 in it from when the roof was repaired, which predates me, and I've been here for five years. Um, so um, I had a conversation with Jan Warner today and uh, Mr. Hutchinson when I dropped off the payroll, and um, Jan Warner remembers us, the building committee that was the building project, the building, the roof project group signed off to close that money. So the town will be closing out that fund of $2,600. Okay. Great. Anything mm -hmm. else for our business manager? Mm -hmm. Not that I could think of. Good. How many warrants were there? Um, there were eight warrants, and it was 51136.97. Thank you. Okay. Are the warrants all signed? Yep. They are. Do you, uh, if there's no school, I'll just keep them, and then I'll bring them on Tuesday morning. We'll, we'll do that. Okay, great. So thank you all, and great. happy holidays. Happy holidays. Have, have, have a happy new year. Yep. You too. Have thank you. <laughs> And when I'll talk to you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the morning. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Another superintendent with school. <laughs> we are closely watching tonight. Yep. Um, instead of going with last snow thing, I went with uh, Mayor Gans. It's already canceled. So last uh, snowstorm, I went with uh, Hampshire County because yeah. we were so close to the Hatfield line and as I watched closely it just didn't look like it was going to uh, mm -hmm. have the effect it did. It continued snowing. Fortunately when school was out it wasn't as bad but there were still rough roads yeah. in Conway. Um, this time I am going with Franklin County. We've been at it since 7 o'clock this morning yeah. and I will tell you that chances are pretty pretty strong that mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because it is a half day and it's a I happy know. half day, we may end up closing because the, the snow looks like it's starting, the snow showers look like they're starting at 5, mm -hmm. but it's turning to snow at mm -hmm. 8, mm -hmm. and it's continuing right on, mm -hmm. and we're leaving school at noon. Mm -hmm. And I have a strong sense that this one I will definitely cancel. But mm -hmm. And I can't do a delay on a half day. Well, you're one ahead because everybody else canceled the last one. Yes, that's yes. right. So, and we still we have a uh, June twelfth end date right now. So, yeah. it's well, and when I left that morning that you canceled, I was like, "Great call! Everybody else is closed, and the roads are totally, perfectly fine." They were, you know, yeah. but you know, it, unfortunately, you know it was worse north of us. Yeah, and the problem is we have so many school choice that come down that way. Well, also, we do, we keep saying we have to take you on a drive through some of the yeah. roads of Conway. And yeah. Yeah. once we do that, there'll be no, like, you know, and yeah. even, it, like, you know, it says freezing rain, and it says that always to us means snow. Yeah. You know, because it's always colder. As soon as you hit the town line coming up 116, it turn like, it can be freezing rain, you hit the line, it's snow. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's, yeah. you cross the line and it's Colder. And there was a bus I, I know that had a little bit of trouble um, in Conway. All the other buses were fine, but there was, was one. Was it in the Conway. Poland bus? No. Or on Brook Road. Yeah. So Did they go through? <coughs> they used stuck to. Some parents. Yeah, the state police were there at the at the end um, shoveling kids. Yeah. Luckily, we had a we happened to have a monitor on that bus for um, a child who has some needs, and mm -hmm. um, 
I called the parents that night of the children, and the mm -hmm. kids thought it was a little adventure. So we were lucky we had the adult. Oh, totally. I'm sure they thought it was an adventure. Yeah. But See, we, they used to close Roaring Brook. Like, exactly. that, there was a section of it they closed. Yeah. So that bus would have to go down, turn around, come back, and then go all the way around Waitley. Ah. But That's now I guess now. it's open. No, it's been closed for a couple few weeks. I don't oh. know exactly yeah. where the bus goes. Goes to the horse barn, goes back around. Okay. The oh, it doesn't um, go there's through. like four or yeah. five yeah. spots Once traditionally on that happens, road where they get they stuck or slide stuck off the road. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter was on yeah. it when they slid off the road. I know because I got to drive my kids a mile to the bus. And that wasn't yeah. a nice <laughs> snow day. It was just a mud yeah. day. Anyway. Yeah. All righty. We have no public for public comment. So we are on to. Do we want to do we want to move Louise up or do we want to do our school improvement plan? If, it, if it's all right with the school committee, oh, sure. I, I would like to ask Louise if she could go now. Yes. Okay. We're always respectful of our guests' time. Thank you. So I have handouts. Um, this is I'll be talking tonight about changes in impasse and then how Conway students did. On the most they always impasse. struggle. So. Uh, yes. Well. <laughs> The first um, thing I want to talk about is that MCAS has changed. This is the first substantive change in the state testing in 20 years because we have these new standards um, that were published since the Common Core came out. And there's frankly more rigor. And so the focus of the new standards as reflected in these MCAS are critical thinking, applying knowledge and the connection between reading and writing. And they're also designed to be given on a computer. Now writing used to only be in fourth grade in elementary school. So now students are asked to write and do comparative essays between two pieces of literature uh, beginning in third grade. So there is increased rigor for every grade. Also another change that we've noticed is uh, math questions, though for many years our students had to explain their reasoning, there are now multiple part questions. So there's part A, <coughs> solve, explain your answer. Part B, dependent on what you answered in part A. And then part C, synthesizing, beginning in third grade. So the rigor is, is raised significantly. Um, so, in addition, it's been given on, on computer. This year, we were given an option. All fourth graders and eighth graders in the state were um, required to take this first go-round of this next generation MCAS on a computer. Schools could opt to also offer it on computer or require their students in the other grades, three, four, five, six, in, uh, in the elementary. We opted for that for several reasons. One, it would give us an opportunity to have the kids have another year of practice. Also, we were given a free pass on leveling. Each year, schools are given a level. Level one, level two, that's the accountability under ESSA. It used to be No Child Left Behind. Now it's Every Student Succeeds. And schools that would opt to take it on computer were given a no, um, grading year. So we thought this is an opportunity for us to uh, get our students accustomed to the computer, monitor how they're doing, uh, ease them in without the stress of also worrying are we going to go down a level because the test is more difficult now. So having said that, we're very proud of the students. They transitioned beautifully into taking it to, onto the computer. We're, there was a lot of anxiety about that um, on the part of the adults because Taking a computer-based test when you're eight years old doesn't sound like it's a simple test, <coughs> particularly with the raised rigor of the test. Looking at two different pieces of literature, scrolling back, pe uh, cutting and pasting evidence from the text to answer your questions. And um, so the plan of the state is this past year grade four in elementary was required. This spring grades four and five will be required, but we're going to opt for three and six to do it again. Again, giving them more experience, getting our teachers accustomed to it, teaching the kids the tools. There are many online tools in the testing environment that we had to teach them how to use, such as a ruler that spins. Um, <laughs> online, they can change the background screen color 
which is an accommodation because some people, black on white on a screen is more difficult for them visually to process. So teaching kids, um, our students, maybe there's another color that is easier for you when you're in this testing environment. So this is going to be old hat for our students, mm -hmm. which is what we want. We won't, don't want the testing environment to become, to be the stressor mm -hmm. because the questions are rigorous mm -hmm. enough without worrying about how do I manipulate these online tools. So we're going to do it again. Um, and we won't be given a free pass this year. We will be getting a level. Fortunately, Conway is a level one school, which is the highest level a school can be meaning that it meets its, um, its goals, the goals that are set for us in terms of growth, as well as closing the gap. The big focus now in ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act, which came after No Child Left Behind, is closing the was gap between... Obama? Was that Obama? Yes, okay. yes. Is closing the gap, there's still an accountability measure, but instead of penalizing schools, that have high poverty populations that traditionally don't do as well on standardized tests for the numerous reasons that we've known in education since standardized tests first came out, is closing the gap between high risk populations and the rest of your school population. So in school districts that have um, high diversity, it's closing that gap. In Conway, it would be um, there is a population that's considered labeled high needs because of a combination of um, uh, free and reduced lunch, their socioeconomics, and special education. So they take the aggregate of every child who takes the test who's either special education or low income, and that's considered your, quote, at-risk population. And the, the, the challenge under ESSA is, is to take that traditionally lower scoring <coughs> group on standardized tests and close whatever gap exists. Conway met that the first time out. In other words, there's a very little gap between their high-risk student population and the typical Conway student in achievement, which speaks to the kinds of support <coughs> students are given here, regardless of their learning profile. So that's the good news. This year we um, got a pass, so we don't get a level. Um, the new achievement levels are no longer is the language on the left. They call it the legacy MCAS, which is the term for the old MCAS. So I'm going to tell people I'm not old, I'm just legacy. <laughs> <laughs> the legacy MCAS was advanced, proficient, needs improvement, and warning. And if you look at that language, under proficient, to be told you need improvement because of how you did on that standardized score is rather discouraging or warning. So there was a lot of work done to make the language A, more standard specific, and B, more growth mindset. Mm -hmm. So it's now exceeding expectations, meeting expectations, which is the language we're now using in our report card because we were aware this language was coming, and it is standards-based. The standard is here, did you meet it? Partially meeting expectations and not meeting expectations. Personally, I'd rather be told I'm partially meeting the expectation that I need improvement. Mm -hmm. So the language is more growth mindset. The rigor of the test is much higher. And so this, um, and I'll go into uh, what that means. On the next um, page of the handout, this is what parents receive. It's in the lower right. <coughs> they are told, um, or the, the report that families receive, what the score is, and it no longer is based on 200 to 280, that was MCAS. A student who scored nothing correct would get a 200 on an MCAS, the old MCAS. A student who got everything correct would be 280. And the levels would be in 20 point increments. So uh, 200 to 220 was warning, 220 to 239 was needs or needs improvement. Starting at 240 was proficient, 260 was advanced. Now it's 500, which totally confused all the educators in Massachusetts because we had to shift the thinking. But this is the new scale. 500 is meeting expectation, 530 <coughs> is exceeding, 470 partially, 440. So 440 is the lowest score a student can get. 
Uh, I'm not sure why they changed that scale, but it's the new numbers that we're getting accustomed to. So we're shooting for 500. Some students can exceed, but the rigor is so high that what has happened is only half the state met it. So I want to show you this chart to begin with. What happened? They've recalibrated this test. Originally, the MCAS in 1993 was designed for only fourth grade and eighth grade. And the purpose of bringing the MCAS in was to ensure that schools would follow the new curriculum frameworks. 1993 was education reform, the very first time there was a state framework. So when these state frameworks came out, the state wanted to ensure that schools took them seriously and put these tests out to hold schools accountable. They never were intended to hold students accountable. It was to ensure that schools would teach the frameworks. So the fourth grade and the eighth grade tests were made. Then came No Child Left Behind under the Bush administration, which required we test every child in three, four, five, six, seven, eight in math and English language arts. So those tests were retrofitted into MCAS. And what happened is the rigor was not the same. So what you're seeing here is the traditional, this is 2015, but this is the pattern we saw across the state for several years. The lines show this is the amount of students who are in the legacy MCAS, warning and needs improvement by grade level. So third grade, fourth grade, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. So looking at this, here's a quiz, which test was the by far easiest to score proficient if this is third grade and this is tenth grade? They didn't know quiz would be involved. <laughs> The legacy, isn't it? It's the legacy. So as you, as you can go from left to right, this is English language arts, this is math, but what you'll see, and I'll, I'll cheat and give you the answer, 10th grade, almost nobody right. was in needs improvement right. or warning. In fourth grade, it was very high. <coughs> Did the kids get smarter? No, the test was easier mm -hmm. for your average student to score as proficient. That's so so this is called, and then oh, here's math. Good. So they yep. could get their diploma. Yeah. Yes. But in fourth grade, so what happened, and several years ago I did a presentation for the Association of, uh, Mass Association of Superintendents, a student who's on the 66th percentile, I made up this family. If you had kids and they all magically were at the 66th percentile nationally with their skills, your third grader would be proficient, your fourth grader would be needs improvement, your fifth grader would be proficient, and your tenth grader would be advanced. Good point. Doesn't make any sense. So this test is what we call not internally calibrated, mm -hmm. and the reason is it was retrofitted because of the no child left behind. Mm -hmm. So Massachusetts has known this for several years. It wasn't as out there as, um, wasn't, they didn't make it publicly known, but um, this is what happened. So with this brand new opportunity to create these new online digital platforms with the new standards, ta-da, the next page, they have made it so that this year only half of the students at every grade <coughs> made it to meeting standards or beyond. In other words, this was the bar setting year. So they raise the rigor, and the rigor is, matches the NEEPS. And what you see below with the blue and the red is the national <coughs> test, the NEEPS, which tests randomly students throughout all 50 states. And when you read in the headlines, Massachusetts fourth graders are top in the nation, and eighth graders top in the nation in reading, top in the nation in math. It's based on the results of these tests that are done biannually um, every other year, randomly selecting X amount of students from each state to take the test, and then they are, the results are compared. So even though Massachusetts was number one, traditionally number one for many, many years, only half the kids meet the standard of what's considered in the NEEPS, considered um, proficient. So Massachusetts said, we're going to make the rigor of our new tests match the rigor of these national tests. So that is why this first year out, they created a test that only half the kids met the standard or exceeded. 
So that's what happened with the test and what happened in Conway. So here's the next page. So despite, you'll see the Conway results, despite the fact that this was the very first time we were, the students were taking a more rigorous exam and we chose to have our students take it on computer, which was adding a challenge, on the right is the state results where you see only half the students, the green and the blue, green is meeting, blue is exceeding. Orange is partially, red is not meeting. This on the right is the state average, and on the left you can see in Conway, more students than the average in the state met and exceeded the standard in English language arts and in mathematics. So we're very proud of our students, not only for making the transition to taking a rigorous test in a digital format, beginning in third <coughs> grade, they outperformed their peers, many of whom took it still on paper. So this is, as usual, really good news reflecting the high achievement of students in Conway. Below, this is the um, science, and the science was a traditional paper pencil. They had not made the transition to the digital format yet. And in the science, many more students scored beyond, above, but we also had more students scoring in the um, not partially meeting. Actually, they didn't change the language on here, on this old test. The science didn't transition yet. But we didn't have anybody, as you see, the red are all of the warning for the science or not meeting. In Conway, no student scored there. So no student <laughs> is in the highest risk category on this test, despite whatever challenges they have in, in uh, their learning profile. So that we're really proud of, too. So it's good news. And then the next pages show the growth. This is what DESE, the Department of Education, is most interested in. They know we're high achieving. And so what the challenge is, is not only closing the gap between high risk and typical uh, students, it's ensuring that you continue to make growth no matter how high you achieve. So what you see here is, I call these the bouncing balls. This is a graph of Conway's student achievement in growth and growth in English language arts. So the X is the average of the state. What you see is the higher the ball bounces, the higher the achievement, and the farther to the right, the more growth. The big red one is the, is the aggregate of three, four, five, or four, five, and six. Third grade has no growth because it's the first time they ever took it. That's the baseline. So the good news is the achievement's high and still, even though there's very high achievement, the growth is higher than <coughs> typical growth. In math, the achievement's high, but the growth wasn't necessarily, it was about average. So if you're achieving really high, and you're taking it first time ever on a computer, and you're growing average, I see this as a positive result for our first time now. So, that's the overall results. I just wanted to share after this first, and I just explained the difference between the legacy MCAS, where there was no internal calibration, and the new MCAS, where it's um, calibrated and it's as high a rigor as NEEP. Of course, the headlines, which I thought you would enjoy, across the state after the results came out. Boston Globe, new tests bring worse scores for Massachusetts students. Just half of students meet MCAS expectations. MCAS scores drop across Massachusetts, et cetera. These I just cut and pasted from um, newspapers. They didn't understand the calibration piece, right? Mm -hmm. And then here is the press release from Malden from the Department of Ed, and on the back are the rationale, which is the real reason the scores are lower, which is number one, it's new standards. Number two, it's the baseline year with this new testing format. And um, they're consistently rigorous, and that's the, f the final dot. The consistency of the scoring standards is a benefit. In other words, they created 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Well, 10 wasn't. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all at once this new test was released instead of in piecemeal as it was before. So Those that's details the story. are not as sexy as MCAS score drop across. Of course not. 
So just, you know, not that the were sexy about, you know, Conway doing really well. Well, Conway always, yes, yeah, Conway does well. But, you know, we have to take all with the, a grain of what's reported because right. the intricacies of the understanding of, the, of what has happened with the calibration is not understood by your average right. reporter. And it's not in, as interesting. So I just thought that, you know, you could take that with the grain mm -hmm. and um, know that, um, you know, Massachusetts, if we put into context, Massachusetts is the highest scoring state across the nation, and Conway is among the highest in Massachusetts. Even above. Doesn't it. get it's much Wisconsin better. Wisconsin, though? Well, oh, isn't yes. it always Mass and Wisconsin that are Massachusetts, always? Wisconsin, neck and neck. Yeah. But Massachusetts. <clears throat> This year was the highest in fourth grade. Wow. And the NAEP, that's the one that's based on the United Nations standards, and they give that all over the globe, right? That is not the, the NAEP is um, national, based on national standards. There's a TIMS, which is given internationally. So when, when they, like, report students in the United States are, are 27th in the world, it isn't based on the NEEP. It's a test like the NEEP. It's called TIMS. But the NEEP is based on, on national standards, and it is, we, uh, Frontier was selected a few times where the NEEP, they send you an email and say, we are coming, send us your class list, you're not gonna pick your best mm -hmm. students, we're gonna just go down the class list and randomly select 40 students. Wow. They did it, um, so that's what they do, they go throughout the nation just to well, really get, get a top. sampling. Yeah, yeah they, don't, they don't want any state to, to cheat it. So Massachusetts, um, does very well, mm -hmm. and Conway does very well in Massachusetts. Because I read over the summer that if Massachusetts was a country, yes. we'd be the fourth highest education system in the country, yes. uh, right below, it was Singapore, Finland, and Israel that yes. were above us. Yes, if Massachusetts was segregated out from the United States, we wouldn't be as low as the rest of the country compared internationally. And they base that on it's not just test scores. There's a lot of other information that there that that comes from. But that is true. That um, Massachusetts, we have high standards. We have um, we also have, admittedly, the socioeconomic. One of the factors that plays into test scores is socioeconomic status, mm -hmm. which is the um, education level of the population or of your family, <clears throat> cross correlated with your income. In fact. Uh, there's sayings that every $10,000 in parent income is worth X amount of points on the SAT. Huh. Okay? So, Massachusetts is third in the nation in income and second in the nation in education level. When you cross-correlate those, we should be top. Mm -hmm. Does the regular so just saying. <laughs> so, there, you know, we, but we also, be, that kind of population demands good schools. Right. So it's a it's a win it's a snowball effect right. of positive factors in Massachusetts right. for education. And there are lots of schools attainment. to choose from. So yes, so that's where we are. Sorry. Yes. Do the regular education students um, do they have to know how to use the online tools on their own, or is assistance available to all students for this new format of the test? We train all students in using those online tools. Right. And so um, the only one that's, um, you, there are specific tools that one needs to have a specific education plan for. Certain one tools. is reading it aloud. Okay. I don't think any of our students are used mm -hmm. that. But the, the manipulating the screen and all of that, that's right. open. That's called a universal access. Mm -hmm. So un those universal accommodations are available for all students. So our teachers needed to first okay. learn these tools and then train students. And there were practice questions right. for um, students to go in and manipulate them. Mm -hmm. They actually thought they were fun, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> we found a couple glitches, actually. Yeah. One, one was that you could change the background color. Yes. Um, so when some kids change the background color, I forgot what color it was, maybe because I called Louise right up, she came over. But, um, it was black on black. You couldn't read. <laughs> you couldn't read you couldn't the text. Read right. <laughs> and well, that, we'll not make that a choice. It huh? was actually, it wasn't the text, it was the diagrams. It was the diagrams. What happened is there so are diagrams, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're getting questions and they know they can't ask us, but they have the, yeah. a couple of kids have these quizzical looks on their faces. Yeah, like, based One on the, the teachers diagram. went over and they're like, <laughs> This question's impossible. It's really impossible, Mrs. Such and Such. Well, why do you think that? You know, 
and she took a peek, and I'm like, oh, Louise, I can't see the diagram. <laughs> oh my so God. we called, we called them. Yeah. There were a couple of those glitches. Yeah. yeah. So this was the first time out, and, and that's what, you know, what we said to teachers is, because teachers here are very conscientious about their test scores, we said, don't worry about the scores this year. Get the kids comfortable with the format. Right. That's our agenda. Right. So that the next time when they take it, it's like, oh, no big deal. Nobody's going to be right. anxious about, I have to take this on a computer. So, so yeah, there were some little So bumps. it's the 10th graders that have to pass it to graduate. Correct. Right? And so last year, did they take the old one? Yes. So they, whatever they, yes, so those scores counted. Yes, they're phasing that one in, the 10th grade mm -hmm. test, because um, it is graduation requirement. It's the most high stakes. Right. Frankly, there are no stakes to any child on MCAS. There's no consequence to not doing well on MCAS for any child until 10th grade. The consequence is on schools where the achievement isn't good. Right. So students don't need to stress about it. Um, until 10th grade. Until 10th grade. And now it's going to be more rigorous, as you can see. It used to be not so hard to pass. Right. You had to be only in the fifth percentile right. to pass. Right. Now it's 50th. Yeah. So they're going to phase that in because the rigor is much more challenging. Right. And um, it's not fair to suddenly spring that on a group of students and say, well, now 45% right. have to be that much higher to pass. The good news about it um, is that students are given several opportunities to pass. So if, if a student does not pass the MCAS first go-round, they can have makeups up yeah. to six times. Massachusetts isn't interesting, interested in having a lot of school dropouts. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, so with this new raised bar, it will be very interesting to see how they're going to um, support the fact that students still need to graduate from high school right. because half the students didn't meet standards in all the grades that were given right. this year. Right. So are they going to have half the 10th graders in the state not, not graduate? graduate? So it's going to be a little bit more of a proce longer process, I believe, for 10th grade. Um, but, but it is rigorous. Uh, the, they're um, multi-step using the environment and um, reading and writing essays online beginning yeah. in third grade. Yeah. It's, it's the toughest test there is. Yeah. Yes. Is it worth noting what a special achievement this is because it's a rig more rigorous test and it's an entirely different format and Conway still outperforms surrounding schools. Yes. Oh. And, and how much is other elementary schools in the district? In the district and the state. How much does, we're a small school and we're a well-staffed small school. Yes. So I think it's important for the town Absolutely. to note, like down to every IA we have, Absolutely. like this level of achievement with a rigorous test in an entirely different format, that's way more of an achievement than other administrations. And mm -hmm. it has to do why and how this school is staffed. Yes. And that's worth noting, talking about town meeting, mm -hmm. right. it's Absolutely. not just a business, it's, and it's wonderful to have data. Yeah. That that makes it evident. Yes. So that's wonderful. Isn't there talk yes. also though of getting rid of MCAS altogether? I haven't heard I'm that. Not heard that. Mm -hmm. that would be. <laughs> I haven't heard that at all. Um, but I know at that the some committee conference there was just talk about how moving away from standardized tests to you know the future of education kind of sure. Stuff. Um, I think, was that part of that? that I mean, there's. You know, Portfolio. Yeah, we use multiple other measures. I mean, we, this is just a test of the school more than of the students. Right. Um, we use multiple measures of that are much more authentic and in real time. I mean, this is what, it, what we call sometimes MCAS is the post-mortem. Mm -hmm. You know, the checkup is we do an assessment today and look at it today and right. see how students are, you know, what we can do to a, a shift instruction. Conway teachers do that frequently. They do it for um, all students. They look carefully. <coughs> so there are no surprises. <coughs> Everybody in this mm -hmm. school who attends the school, teachers know exactly where their learning mm -hmm. is and what the next step is. And that's, mm -hmm. so the achievement isn't just, um, it's not luck, it's not, it's, it's because of the, the real care that is put into monitoring growth for students mm -hmm. and ensuring they all grow, mm -hmm. and they do. And I agree, it's a huge achievement to score first time out on a, on a test that only 60% took online to score so well. And 
we're proud of Conway. Great. Well, thank you so much for that report. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very thank you for your good. continued support right. of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Have Thanks a good holiday. holiday. Thank you. And a good snow day, maybe. Every, every, I don't have to say this, but everyone knows what a great job. Yes, does. Yep. we do. Thank you, Louise. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Louise. Uh, cool. Okay. So there's a killer editorial, too, if you can ever mm -hmm. get it right another one. She did a couple years ago. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. Now we, bat we went back from new business. We're skipping back to old business, unfinished business. Not quite the same as old business, I guess. Um, from a psychological perspective. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the 2017-2018 school improvement plan. Right, so that, uh, our goals again focus on student achievement, um, which obviously we continue to monitor, as Louise said, on a regular basis. And, you know, one thing I want people to understand is that I think there's this sense in the community that every class has an IA, and that's not really how it works. How it works is um, that IAs are placed based on student needs um, in, any, in any given month. Um, so when we look at data and look at where students are, for example, we had to add uh, two more reading groups to grade two, and so IA schedules are changed accordingly to support those groups. So um, I think at one time that was probably the case where every, it was just sort of a steadfast practice. But we find that it's best when, for example, the kids are, the second grade kids are art. And Lynn, Lynn Bosman, who spends a lot of time in second grade, at that time she goes to sixth grade and she supports, she supports in groups in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. um, when a teacher, we know a teacher is doing morning meeting at nine o'clock every day. Um, it's it's lovely for the IA to be in there, but it's really not a teaching time. So that's a time when an IA might go over to Paulette in the reading lab and take a reading group. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to, because I yeah. think s some people in the community think it's well, definitely a discussion. Like They're gearing up for that this yeah. exact yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. this is the issue for them. Yeah, and. Um, uh, Get them to come observe in the school. No, nah, there's a they they can get that there's no hard and fast rule about like X number of kids means yeah. X number of IAs. Right. They can get that if they 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 perceive that if they push that this is the area that will give in because the ground underneath us is a little bit less firm than in some other things where you can just point to some rule or some law and say X da da da. Yeah. And um, and and they see that there's some that there, there there's at least one class that doesn't have an IA at all, and, and, and that there's uh, one class that usually has two IAs. Yes. And and that they'll and and to them, they're like you know but if, but you can give on this. Needs. But just just <clears throat> just so you know, in case anyone's talking about that, they are. Never, um, so it's not true that one grade doesn't have an IA. The truth is that. That their, that particular grade has an IA during times when it's needed. So I would say two and a half hours a day, that particular class has IA support. Um, another grade might have two because one calls for IEP. So I don't look at IAs as this, you're in first grade, you're in second grade, you're in third <coughs> grade, that might be your home base, but where are the needs of the kids? And that's where your schedule is. So. Um, and maybe that's a good idea, Phil, I'm thinking in my head, to bring a couple schedules without names or anything of, you know, we're in a grade two reading group and then we're in a grade four math group. And so people can see that, no, it's just not every teacher has an IA. You know, that might be helpful. I think we also need to point out that as the students become older, um, they're able to be independent learners. And so when you have young children they're learning when they're in different centers while the teacher's doing a reading group and they're doing an activity here and an activity here. They need more supervision because they're younger, their attention spans aren't as long and they're, they're, they're not able to access the, the tools and the materials to do the learning. As they get older, they're more independent. So the need isn't there, but when, they're ex when, when the teacher is teaching a complex uh, a complex theory or a complex uh, set of facts or some operation, 
there will be those students during that time, that 45 minutes to two hours, where they would need an adult next to them saying, what he's saying is this, and what's going on is that. And then that adult can leave, the child can continue learning on his own. As they get older, you actually, they wean off of having to have someone with them all the time because they develop their own skills and their own learning abilities. But the, yes, there are times when the youngest, we have, especially our three and four year olds, you need people there all the time, but when they're getting 10, 11, and 12 years old, no. So they're there for the important learning times to help improve their process of learning, but then they, then they go elsewhere they're needed. They, they go right. elsewhere. That's what mm -hmm. the misconception is. And so we have first graders that might be reading below level, and so they can't just have the regular reading program. We have some f first graders that have the regular reading program and then three extra doses of reading, right? So they have an extra dose of reading with the teacher, an extra dose of reading with Paulette, and an extra dose of reading with an IA. Because if you just give them the regular amount of time and the regular program, guess what? It's not going to improve. So they have three doses of reading, is what I call it. Um, so yeah, I think that that we have to clear up some of that idea that every classroom teacher has an IA because that's not. Well, how yeah, and when at during the public budget meeting last year, if you remember, the the selectman and the finance committee guy, they were each they created their own little feedback loop on this issue. Mm -hmm. um, Just and, stimulating the stuff. And, and and it was, um, it was all that the professional staff that was here, I think that, that their focus on this, on, on the IA issue, yeah. like caught us all for a little bit of a whatever, yeah. and it took us a while to really get coherent, like, responses yeah, to them, yeah, yeah. and um, and we were so busy, like, cor correcting their mistaken factual assertions that we didn't really get to, like, go after, the, the, yeah, like, what it is that they wanted to yeah. do. Um, but they think that they smell blood in the water from that, and they're going to be uh, so just pass yeah. the word down. They're going to yeah. be, yeah. they're going to be mm -hmm. all over that this year. Yeah. All right. Can we move on with the school yeah, improvement sorry. plan? Yeah, and then school safety and cl um, climate, of course, is a priority. Diversity, mm -hmm. equity, and inclusion, and then communication, um, uh, which I think I think the staff is feeling really good about. Um, the different ways uh, that we're communicating with parents, but we want to keep that going. So those are our, our areas, which I think are the most important areas um, in any elementary school. You didn't send out a robo about today's performance, right? No, I put it in a newsletter and an email, and I thought Megan and Mary Jo were sending home letters mm -hmm. and, and robos, and then I found out they were just sending them to band and string parents. Mm -hmm. So. Well, there was quite a few parents. It's packed, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you couldn't really find a parking space. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah, I had hoped to come, but I couldn't get away. So. Well, you, you can say you came because it was so packed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Delaine, wasn't that concert great? Yeah. Yes. Like when I, you know, yeah. missed my boys' hit basketball. Like the right. hoop. Exactly. That was a great shot. So do we need a vote on this? Yes. We can I get a motion to accept the school improvement plan? I'll make a motion. And a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then the next thing, um, just quickly report um, our intercom system. So we have a quote and the, a company and the job will be done in January. Yay! Right. Yes. Yes. Ashley will be thrilled to hear it. Yes, she will be, yes. <coughs> um, and Is it within budget? The quote? Yes, it was right within budget. Okay. I think it was like right within budget. Okay. We got two quotes. One was ten thousand dollars over budget. Wow. Um, which was sort of a fancy, not a fancier system, but a system where you could call into rooms, um, like with with an intercom. Mm -hmm. Like Mrs. West, could you please send, you yeah. know, Elaine? Um, yeah. Or whatever. So that we won't have that feature, but that's okay as long as we have a system to make all calls or announcements. Mm -hmm. um, professional development, our teachers have been working really hard, although, you know, Louise has been um, really great leading the charge and getting the report cards online. Um, this year we don't have the pe feature where parents can go in and actually look at the assessments that teachers are putting in, but obviously that's the direction it's going. It was um, such a big change for our teachers, such a big change, but they 
as usual, met the expectation and we sent our first ones home. And I think parents are gonna eventually really, really like them. They can see, okay, my child got um, meets, ex meets standards or whatever. And they can go in and see the data as to where they were meeting standards or not meeting Did standards. they go out? Today? Yes, they went out. When? 50, December 15th. Oh, geez, I haven't seen him. So you've seen him? You haven't seen him? An email with test results, with, with report card grades. Have <coughs> you seen him? Did you get a report card? Did they physical. Go I got a physical card. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Not online. Yeah. Right, no, no, right, right, right. No, she's right, right. talking okay. about a portal that will open up eventually through oh, power right. school okay. that will go right, right into oh, the grade okay. book. Yeah, power school. They have power. it at the high school. <laughs> yes, Usually they works great. More than people Middle school and high school And the goal is to have it bring it down to this level soon. And this month we've been working on growth mindset at our school, which has been great. Um, I gave the staff a little tic-tac-toe game where they had to do these nine things, um, mostly centered around growth mindset. Um, and every when they got tic-tac-toe, they got their name in for a raffle and they got some PDPs. And the other part of it was we had a block that said, during the month of December, greet the children in a fun way in the morning. Well, we, we had a blast with that. Jeremy one day in his blow-up dinosaur costume and singing Jingle Bell Rock to the students. The kids I love it. I bet he won. <laughs> kids <laughs> love it. Yeah, he has this huge dinosaur oh my costume. Goodness. He's got the little Huge hands. with his little hands. And so that was fun. But, oh, um, my goodness. I, as, I, as I've said to you before, when I took the job, I knew the hardest, the, the <clears> most <throat> important, but probably the most difficult part of the job was going to be making really great teachers all you know even better yeah. and every time i throw something at them they just keep rising to the challenge and they just keep getting better and better just when you think they can't so um couldn't be more thrilled so That's awesome. thank you for letting me be your educational great. leader mm -hmm. That's awesome <clears throat> all righty so we are on to superintendent's goals yes thank you so much um would you pass these down please So I was able to, and thank you for allowing me to have a supervisor, uh, superintendent's advisory committee. We worked really hard on these goals. I came to them with a, a framework. I took the original goals I had done, and then I added pieces from the uh, feedback I got at the October meeting. And we spent about three hours that evening <laughs> working really hard on them. So. Um, these are the first page are the uh, targeted standards I'm working on for this year. Uh, part two, the next page are the goals. Um, and the goals for the district are communication between the central office, school sites, and families will continue to strengthen through collaborative efforts. Um, number two, the superintendent will facilitate the updating and or adding um, new school committee policies as recommended by the Mass Association of School committees there's about 99 that we need to look at and that's going to start in January I think Phil's on that committee Woo um, committee's like a paint drive fun committee. times <laughs> well and we have some other things to look at too um, <coughs> the money we're charging for using Frontier Regional School for different community events and things like that uh, number three the budget process including a fi financially sustainable vision will be completed in collaboration with school committees, district administrators, and other stakeholders. And again, we've already done part one of that by meeting across the table for each individual school with the whole, uh, the whole cast of characters that have an input in the school. The facilities director, the technology director, the special ed director, the early childhood director, the um, the uh, curriculum director, the business director, myself, and we all sat around and we, we just looked at every angle of Conway School and what Conway School needs, what's the vision, what, what are the visions for each of these pieces of each of these departments to make Conway School the best school it can be. And we, we worked hard at that. We spent a couple of hours doing that. As Patty Kavanaugh said, we have the raw data. We're going to, to the board to do that, and we'll come up with some numbers, and we'll be back uh, with our justification, our narratives. Uh, I'm going to have some 
I'm going to illustrate with um, graphs and different uh, pie charts and stuff, but to really help the Conway stakeholder, <coughs> the taxpayers, understand where the money's going, why, what it's doing. And I think one of the things we need to work on is maybe a slide explaining the role of a, para, a paraprofessional or an instructional assistant within the school, that it's not mm -hmm. a teacher gets a helper. Mm -hmm. It's people help students, and the people move from here to here to here. It's not just sitting in a classroom all day while a teacher does the talking. Student achievement goals, which I'm required to have, uh, all the students in pre-K to 6 will participate in at least one engineering design project and one new science unit. And those are aligned with the, the new 2016 math science curriculum standards. As you can see in the information that Louise gave you tonight, the MCAS in science has not caught up with the new standards, which they will eventually. Um, and 100% of the students in grades 7 through 12 will be responsible for summarizing at least two science informational documents based on Collins' writing program strategies as evidenced by the science faculty developed summary rubrics. And what that means is we have a strategic plan for the district, which was voted on, and that's curriculum, assessment, and special ed. And the, the assessment piece is that we're working on standardized assessment so that we can we can kind of compare students across the districts across our schools the union schools and also at the 712 for instance the whole science department has gotten together and developed rubrics so that the students can become independent learners and responsible for their own learning so that they understand what's expected it's not just uh, vocabulary tests or multiple choice tests it's really about going deep into the subject, being able to use your critical thinking skills. A lot of it, just like Louise said, is explaining your thinking. Not just, I got the answer, I got the answer because I did this and then I used that and I added that and then therefore this. So these are the rubrics that have been uh, made and so we're going to be seeing how that works. My professional practice goals, again, uh, year two of the Massachusetts Association of Superintendents, new superintendent induction program, and um, developing a professional new network with um, Association of Rural Superintendents, Regional Superintendents, Connecticut Valley Superintendents Roundtable, and the Franklin and Hampshire, Franklin and Hampshire Superintendents Collaborative. And when you turn the page, you'll see the goals with the actions. And you can see each goal written out with the objective, what the actions are, what the resource are, the timeline, the benchmarks, and then the artifacts that I'm going to present at the end of the year to show you my movement towards that. I will also be meeting with the Superintendent's Advisory Committee to actually show them my um, growth during the year and how I'm doing, and that way uh, I'll be able to get the input from a person from each of the school committees and help to know that I'm meeting their needs, that I am improving and doing the best I can for the district. Very comprehensive. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was. It is, and yeah. Elaine put a lot That's of work in. And it was noted um, by Cindy on Tuesday not night, a not a lot of food there that night. So, <laughs> so oh, trail no. mix. I didn't think it would take that yeah, long. Yeah, you did. Yeah, started yeah. at five. She did. Lynn pulls out some trail mix. Oh, and we're right. like, <laughs> I know. I, I felt That's badly. funny. Cindy did comment on that, too. Well, that is a good we, the <laughs> well, we thought it would it be an hour. Yeah. You said like a half hour. Did and we were. Well, oh, that is very comprehensive. We turned around and it was 8 30 and it was like we rolled up our sleeves i was so to grateful it. to everyone but it, it was <coughs> it was one of it the was a great ones. process thank you so much yeah. thank you really and under my oh, under my report yep yeah. wait I, we need to vote this oh right yes please so do. can we have a motion. vote to approve the superintendent's goals motion to approve i second all in favor aye uh, aye thank you very Excellent. much yeah now on to your report. Oh, thank you. So my report is essentially it's about the Conway well, water supply in the well. And I'm going to read this uh, memo, which I sent to you as well, because I wanted you to know a little bit beforehand. 
So on November 3rd, uh, 2017, the Mass uh, Department of Environmental Protection sent a notice to the town of Conway outlining the results of their inspection of the Conway School well. Since this well serves as a school, it is considered a public water supply and it is required to comply with the related Massachusetts state requirements. This inspection is done every five years and in the interim we, uh, we utilize a consultant, Michael Blaine slash Water Pros, to do the ongoing water testing and compliance assurance in regards to the DEP regulations and requirements. The last inspection identified several routine maintenance deficiencies and recommendations and one operation and maintenance recommendation, which is a proactive replacement of the well pump and one oops, of the well pump and one operation and maintenance requirement, uh, evaluation and inspection of the 2,000 gallon pressurized water tank. And these could have capital budget implications. We didn't replace a well pump? We did, didn't we, two years ago? I thought we replaced right. a well pump. No, I think the pumps, the, the oh, pump. Was it the septic? No. Yeah. No, it was the septic, it was septic right. and it was the holding tank for the septic. Right. But I everything seem to remember something to do with the well pump. But okay. So we have a budget proposal. Yeah. Budget. yeah. What I'm asking for is, um, we have a we've been working with Tom Hutchinson and and Bruce, and I'll put that in there. Um, but what I'm tr I'm describing is is a request to file for capital request funds for this uh, project. We have a budget proposal for the tank inspection at 4950 This is a requirement and must be done. It is also highly recommended that since this tank has been in service for 25 plus years, that we take advantage of the cost benefits of the open tank to do a relining of the tank at an additional cost of 16000 Jesus. In regards to the That's recommendation of the pump answer. replacement, yeah. this should be budgeted and completed as well. We have gotten two contractors to look at the work but have not yet received a proposal. In discussing this with Michael Blaine, our consultant, and Bruce Jeanette, mm -hmm. our custodian at Conway, who's been very helpful in bringing the contractors to the site, it is recommended that we carry an allowance of at least $5,000 to do the pump replacement. This project will involve lifting and replacing the pump from a deep well and could also require replacement of galvanized pipe and electrical wiring. So the total capital request with a small contingency of 10% uh, comes to $28,500. And I guess um, I'm asking you to vote on whether we would go further and ask the town for a capital request of this $28,500. There's not too many options, are there, really? <clears throat> no, uh, this is the perfect thing for capital requests. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's understandable. Are there matching funds or state funds or federal funds to do this kind of thing, or is it? <laughs> not that. Not mm -hmm. that. You know, we've uncovered. Yeah. It's also it's, it's one of those things that there's going to be about a dozen people in the audience that are going to know so much more about all this stuff than, oh, than uh, you know, than anybody working for the school. Yeah. Um, it helps if you get a local a local quote a local quote from somebody a uh, you know somebody that who's the who's the Deerfield guy that does wells. Uh, we, mm. uh, we always got New Hampshire guys to yeah. do our wells. <laughs> There's a Deerfield guy that does wells and all that stuff. Uh, mm. But, yeah. These are proposed costs, and when he goes to do the work, of course, he has to, you know, get the appropriate bids, mm -hmm. the state contractors, yeah. prevailing wages and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, We don't always go with the lowest bidder, do we? It depends on uh, the specs for the job. Okay. Sometimes they'll come in low, but then they're missing a piece of what, what it is okay. we really need. Oh, right. And quality and references and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. So can I get a vote to put this, to put the, move this fo forward as a warrant to work with the town to get it on the agenda for town meeting? I'll move for that. I will second. All in favor? 
But um, unanimous. Okay. Uh, is that it for your report? Do you want to say anything about snow days, or are you? I um. No, I, I will tell you the last snow day, again, we talked about this earlier, and I, I apologize. I, I really thought we were closer to the Hampshire line, and when I made the call, I really didn't realize that <laughs> snow, it just, when a, anybody looking at that, you just couldn't tell by the, right. the weather forecast. Yeah. How did you change from last year? Could you? I, I nailed it last year. Yeah. I know. The I weather know. report changed hourly. Yes, this weather report. <laughs> no, but last year, you nailed. I'm sure you still got flack either way, but last year you nailed every call. So well, no, I did. You do something different this year? Yes, I did. I I actually picked a different county. <laughs> I did, and uh, so I need to. Um, yeah, I just need to apologize uh, because I tried to. Exp and, and part of my communication goal was to tell families you know how I made that decision and and you know apologize so when I called to cancel the evening you know the evening events I did get on the phone and say well I need to tell you what I did and this is how it happened and I'm really sorry I thought we could do it and it just didn't work out so um, and there were some people that were really really great that just they said you, you know I'm grateful you usually call it too soon too often this is a good call there were a couple people that said you know what? This wasn't a good call. <laughs> so, and it happens, and I've been told that. Tell them, take a turn. It happens. Well, so weather you did, you did set the that. record, though. I think the district record for longest robocall. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I think Kristen's beaten. Kristen's really had pretty really? long robocalls. Wow. wow. My goal was to communicate more yep. with the families, and and it's so funny because. Um, I did hear, well, the people are wondering, you know, you were rambling on the call, and I felt badly because I was communicating, but I guess I need to try to please everyone, and sometimes no, I'm not going to get it right. Well, I remember no, no, you driving don't. to, I had to drive into work thinking Northampton would cancel. And I would, no, Northampton wouldn't cancel, but I would have to try to get there somehow. And then I got on the roads, and it was totally fine in the Nothing. morning. Yeah. I had to go to Holyoke. I was like, oh, it makes sense. I was like, open. I think Elaine Perfect was call. talking. When Elaine said we want to say anything about snow days, I think she was talking about tomorrow. Oh, yeah. tomorrow? Yeah. Are you Elaine? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 can we get the inside track? <laughs> well, it's not mine. No, so. you know what though? Um, my my daughter uh, has been up till 3 a.m. every night for two weeks because AP Euro History's big project is due tomorrow, and she's like, if they cancel school. And all of my no sleep, no oh, eat, well. everything is for naught. Don't sway the decision. There's going to be hell that pays. Don't yeah, sway well. the decision. She I won't be all for naught. She'll be done. Right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I do have, I will say that I am erring on the side of caution. And yeah. there's yeah. probably a good chance my that My sister's I'll district in New Hampshire is yeah. already closed. Yeah, Hampstead. East Hampton's closed. Quabbin's oh, closed. Um, they're, they're several. Gateway. Yeah, they, yeah several, those are all lightweight, <laughs> so we can, we can Go, we can don't even, <laughs> don't even try to throw Lynn under the bus. Yeah, like no, you. no. I, I, so um, I would like to call it tonight, but I'm still hesitating. I was a little burned last time, and I yeah, I thought it was supposed to start later. No, it's supposed to start Let's look right now. Yeah, well, one a.m. WWLP said um, five a.m. I've got uh, so many what phones here. Says. What do you have? I last always I, I always watch NECN. Last I, I look at Weather Underground, and last I saw um, was it was going to light snow, light snow, and light snow, and then snow, 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 snow every right. hour. Nine to noon. Steadiest snow over Franklin County is nine to noon. And you know what that looks like in Conway when the buses are going home at noon. Right. If, if it was a regular snow. day and we were staying in school until three. It's going to snow all day. Yes, I know. It's 5 a.m. snow. 9 a.m. snow, 1 p.m. snow. East Hampton's closed. you got to be kidding me. Berkshire East will be open. Next day is freezing rain. Oh, I yeah, hate it's going to be a messy one. I hate know. freezing rain. I think tomorrow it's, uh, yeah, it's a shame because it's a half day. Everyone but. has a half day, and it's anywhere from 5 to 8 to 2 to 4, but I really hesitate to take a chance. Well, do, isn't your... Isn't it mostly the recommendations of the road crews? Mm -hmm. 
It is. And when did I, they say open last time? Um, they they all said that the roads look good in the morning. Ron Sweet was the one that said it might be icy on the way home. I'm a mm -hmm. little concerned about mm -hmm. that. But I went ahead and, and mm -hmm. had school. I got to say, if you listen to any road crew guy, it's Ron because of our hills. You know what I mean? They're all flat down there. I mean, Sunderland's flat, Deerfield's flat, Waitley is pretty flat. So we have, you know, the elevation that Ron makes it different. So it's not roads. Ron, it's the, just and, and that our bus, roads are... The big bus are, is driving on dirt roads. I know. Ron right. is the most important piece. Conway's the most important piece right. in any call we make. I mean, I remember Marty getting, like, fried on a call when it basically, it was a windy, rainy day, and she called school. And there, but up in Conway, it was icy. Mm -hmm. Down there, they're like, do you remember that? Yeah. You were at Frontier yeah. then. Mm -hmm. And down in Frontier, and everybody coming down from that area is like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. They were like, why did we, you know, I w they were driving, because she called, it was a late call, too. And, you know, it was fine. But up here, it was icy. The weather underground has it starting at 5. 5 a.m. And it's going all the way through. Right on through. Yeah, right. Oh, right on to the 7 ground. p.m., yeah. 8 p.m. So I would say. Tell your kids. Phil, I I'm going to right tell Clayton. I don't you, think I have inside you power. Get a, you get a little. <laughs> I was sitting here with your principal and your yeah, superintendent. You get a little. Uh, <laughs> just just a quick funny one. I was superintendent. I, I used to give my nieces, well, of course, all the administrators first, but I'd call my nieces because they thought they were pretty cool that their aunt was a superintendent. I'd say, yeah. hey, no school tomorrow, you know after I told you. Oh, you. yeah. And my youngest niece said, really? She goes, well, I guess I think I'm going to wait till Mr. Ames calls to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the principal. That's funny. I said, That's honey, funny. I'm pretty sure there's no school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So I, yeah, I, from looking at that one, I, I think I'm going to, I hesitate to jump the gun on my Franklin County friends, though. Last time I didn't go with him, and this time I'm going to jump the gun. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you can let one of them lead if you want. But yeah, it probably will be at 4 a.m. I would say we're closest to Mohawk. Yeah, and Mohawk is saying, and we also do pictures of each other. Oh, stop! <laughs> yeah, like That's like, right. what do we do? Here's a yikes, yeah. you know. Um, What's Mohawk doing? Then we sent out these little scales. But Mohawk, uh, let me tell you. Gary has sent us today a, a link that all the Frontier kids are using. It's like Snow Day Prediction app or something like oh that. Oh, my God. And it tells them what the percentage of having oh a snow God. day is. Hey, it's all math, right? There's Can I ask a question practice. about school maintenance on vacation? Yes. Do you know of any projects happening? Um, only Bruce, the only project that's happening is Bruce is going to try to... Um, paint the conference room but no gym floor or no anything gym like floor? that no I, do, I don't know awful. i didn't i didn't know that that was a it's really bad that was done like throughout i mean and we could we're only having no, i had no idea he, he did it over the summer and that's usually yeah. and he did he did a really good job this year actually yeah. he's three, it? did it's three awful. Coats. right i know I, I play on it it's and that I, that is really um the public usage of it and the salt and the uh, we talk, and why the not dirt. do it again? We talk to the coaches about having the kids wear street, right. you know, change yeah. their shoes. Mm. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like again, only being my second year, he didn't do it last break, so I didn't even think. Well, it would be embarrassing to hold the game on that floor right now. It's so disgusting. Yeah, like it and cleans the game up. Start. It cleans up. It cleans up. Yeah. We were just. No, it's not. You got to bring it. You got to bring your own towel. You got to bring your own towel to put around the push Anyway, room. I think it needs it before games start. Over, in I think January. he's only working three days next week, but I'll I'll talk to him. Okay. Maybe if we, Midland can allow a weekend or something for him to come in and do. Well, and we're we're talk. willing to not have practice if over wait, wait, break wait, wait. if okay. he can get to it, but if he can't, you if know. Not maybe he can do it a weekend. He can do it. Come back. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Nope. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye, aye. aye. aye.